Hi everyone, Patricia Warby, Alchemy Therapies here, and I'm delighted to introduce my friend and colleague, Julie Moore, who's going to talk to us today about the MELT method. Now, Julie is a licensed MELT practitioner, and I must be honest with you, before I met Julie, I'd never heard of MELT, and, um, but now having tried it, I am very, very converted to this idea that we can change our bodies um, and get ourselves out of pain as well. So, Julie, I know that the reason you became a practitioner was because of your own personal experience. So do you just want to tell us a little bit about what happened and, and how you uh, found this? Yeah, I, I, yeah. as you know, um, I had a hip replacement uh, nearly six years ago now. Um, I um, basically, um, I had a was sort of like um, age uh, 53, I think I was when I had it done. And um, I had a life of activity. So I'd been a gymnast um, and I'd done a lot of sport and things with my body. And basically I got osteoarthritis in my hips. So I was in a little bit of a pain, um, which led to um, the surgeon suggesting that I had a hip replacement in just one hip and following the operation I realized that I'd been left unfortunately with a leg length discrepancy, discrepancy which was about 12 to 15 millimeters so quite a significant sort of amount which made me off balance um, but the worst thing was it left me in chronic pain so whereas he'd taken the hip pain away I'd now got chronic pain from having a, one leg longer than the other. Um, long story short, tried absolutely everything. I'm, I'm, I'm a um, Pilates geek. I've done Pilates for 25 years, um, which helped substantially, but couldn't get rid of my pain. Um, traditional medicine only would give me um, prescription painkillers, mm -hmm. which unfortunately I got addicted to. And, uh, which then have other side effects, as you know, um, and left me in a bit of a mess, really. <laughs> yeah. um, but it was at one of my Pilates sessions um, that I discovered MELT. My Pilates instructor had been to the Fascia Symposium in Birmingham, and she'd won a session and some kit when she was there. She'd gone to the talk, she'd listened to it, and she'd won this. So she had a little bit of info about it. She brought it back to the studio and she knew I was in a lot of pain. And she showed me what Melt was very, very briefly. She got me onto a roller, a very soft roller, did a couple of things. And after 10 minutes, um, she said, now, what do you feel? And it was like, well, my pain's dissipated. It's not as bad as it was. I was sort of curious. I'm very skeptical by nature. And I was curious as to, to what she was doing. And she couldn't really answer my questions. So she said to me, just in an off, off the cuff moment, you know, moment, she said, we'll just go to New York and find out about it. So I was like, oh, well, yeah, right, okay. <laughs> um, but I did. <laughs> I was so intrigued. I did a lot of reading about it. And I, um, I, I just thought I need to know more about this because I don't understand why it works. Um, and at that point, I, my instructor couldn't really instruct me in it because she wasn't a male practitioner. There were none in the area at all. There were only very few, like a handful in the whole of the UK. Um, so I did. I went across to New York and I spent three days with the creator of the Melt Method, Sue Hitzman. And I learned about connective tissue or fascia. Mm -hmm. And I learned about various melt techniques. And I after Sue did a whole um, hour long session with us, I had my first um, completely free or pain free day that I'd had in three, year, three four years. Um, so I, I was convinced. Um, I came back, no intention of basically um, teaching anybody else. It was, this was for me, I needed to get out of pain um, because by just a bit of background, by, by trade, I'm an IT um, executive. I've done a lot of IT work. Um, my home business is, is based around IT. However, when I came back um, and I started to do more Mel and I started to learn about it, I realized how powerful it was. 
and I then started trying to teach other people. So I, I set up my own little milk practice. Since then, I've been on to do lots more training. So I've been back to the States um, twice. I actually help Sue Hitzman when she comes over to the UK because she now does UK training for instructors. So I help her do that. Um, and uh, I've got another course coming up in a month's time in New York again um, to do uh, something called Melt Performance, which is going on a little bit more from what I'll be telling you about. Um, so yeah, so basically Melt, my story, I had a hip replacement, I was in pain, I found Melt. I do melt. It got me completely out of pain. I haven't taken a painkiller in three years. Um, and my body now moves so much better. It, I will still have that problem. I will still have, um, uh, you know, the imbalance that I have. Um, and my body's out of alignment. So I'm always going to have problems. So melt is a, is a regular thing for me. Um, but it's like anything. Um, you know, when you find that you have to look after your body and when you find something that works for you, it's, you don't just do it for a month, feel better and then stop doing it. I mean, you wouldn't do that with cleaning your teeth. Um, <laughs> you know, you clean your teeth because you know it's preventative and you know that will keep you, you know, you know the hygiene up level up. Um, otherwise, you know, you're going to end up losing your teeth. And it's the same with the rest of the body. But people don't understand that. People you know, you don't generally do things, you might exercise, but you don't do any sort of like preventative to help the, uh, the whole body structure, if you like. And that's what I've learned to do with Mel. No, it's a wonderful story. Um, yeah, very inspiring, I'm sure, for a lot of people out there who are listening who might have chronic pain for various reasons, because obviously yours was very particular related to your operation. But we mustn't forget the stress component because you've talked a lot about being in IT, you know, before that, um, which is a high performance job, isn't it? Deadlines, structure, Absolutely, that sort of, yeah. lots of travel. Lots of um, travel, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so let's, let's just make it clear to people, these things that happen when, when we say, oh, I suddenly I've got back pain or for me, I've got plantar fasciitis at the moment. Uh, which seems to have come out of the blue and it's like, oh, this has suddenly happened. Yet, if you really look at your life, how it was before you got the symptom, um, you'll have seen that the stress is such a massive component to where you've ended up. Yes. And um, for me, it's sort of like, yes, it's got to become a daily practice or at least weekly. I do yoga mm -hmm. weekly because we've got, to, we've got to keep the body in tune, if you like, from where it has been, which has been forgotten, really, um, yeah. ignored. And, and this connective tissue is such a big component, isn't it, of, of it is. holding on to stress. Do you want to talk yeah. a little bit more about that, perhaps, for people? Because they may not get the, the relationship. Yeah, I mean, connective tissue, um, we always say that it's daily living that causes um, connective tissue dehydration we refer to that as stuck stress so the stress comes in it's the body it's the stress within the body itself um, and uh, if the connective tissue gets dehydrated then just everything that you do during the day um, is not you know it's, it's dehydrating the body so people that sit for long periods of time they're sat on their pelvis so they're, they're squashing that and they're dehydrating it. Mm. Um, and I say it, it's a daily living thing and it doesn't just, you know, pick certain people. It happens to know whether you're, you know, you're young, you're old, you're active, you're sedentary. Um, because it's a natural cellular process um, and it happens to everybody. Mm. Um, and you'd think that drinking water can rehydrate. It does, but it's not enough and it can't, mm. can't rehydrate you on its own. Shall I talk a little bit about what connective tissue is? Yeah, because, I was going to say, remind yeah. people, yeah. because we, So we connective to... tissue is a, a three-dimensional um, body-wide system. Mm -hmm. So it supports, protects everything within your body. So that's um, muscles, veins, skin, bones, uh, blood vessel, everything within the body, it will protect it. So it's a three dimensional system. And I've got a little prop here. <laughs> My little props. Well, hey. <laughs> this, so imagine that this is what your body is covered in. It's just underneath the skin mm. and it moves, but it can get stuck. So if you get it stuck in one position, mm. it sort of 
doesn't move very well so if when it's when it's nice and fluid and it's working it moves if it, it can get stuck in a certain position and then it, it starts to get jammed up so it can't move so well um, because what happens is that the connective tissue is made up of primarily collagen elastin and water so if you take my hip for example where I had a cut into it it's a big scar yeah. that's caused some connective tissue to dehydration because the, the, the skin and the fascia particularly has been cut mm. and sewn back together so there's this big jar there if you like where it mm. just everything gets stuck and so the, the fluid within the body can't actively move around so if you think of it like um, a river so you get sediment in a river the river stops running flowing and it, it can't get round, so it goes up and under. And, and that's what happens within the body. So it gets stuck, which is then what causes pain. Mm. Um, so the connective tissue is, I suppose you can call it a scaffolding for the body. Yeah, yeah. So it just, as I say, it supports and protect, protects absolutely everything. Um, and what we do with melt is that we help rehydrate that. So the moves that we do, um, and because it causes, it, it contains things like um, collagen. You know, it's that's the thing that once that gets dehydrated, that's what causes things like wrinkles um, and cellulite. Um, cellulite. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so, if you keep it more hydrated, then you're going to have less of that as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, so with how, melt. Yeah. Sorry, carry on. Yeah, I was going to say, how does it work? So, what do you do? Right. That's, so with melt. I'm going to get some more props. More props. We love props. <laughs> we use a soft roller. And when I say soft, mm. I mean soft. So here we go. Yeah, it not, blends not completely working. into. Yeah. You won't find any other market on the roller that does that. It really is gentle. Because one of the things about fashion, and there is a lot of um, misconception about this, um, is that you, you, you roll it, but you roll it hard. And there are a lot of products on the market that are really hard and you see spiky things, yeah. but you're actually stressing the connective tissue when you use those. So those are specifically designed to actually um, uh, mimic hands-on. So we call melt method, um, you know, it's a, it's a self method and it's a, um, uh, a body method so it's 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 like being your own therapist if you like yeah. we also use melt balls mm. so we use just i've got some here as well yeah. hey. so we use a soft one yeah. and we got the little one and we got a big hard one so we've got four balls that we use and they're primarily used on the hands and the feet because the hands and the feet are the things that as you age particularly your knuckles start to get bad your feet get you know yeah so um all of the methods that we use are gentle mm. and they're very quick to do so we there are a couple of things that we always say we we get in and we get out you don't want to over stimulate your connected connective tissue so we do very quick movements and then we come back out again and we move on various parts of the body it's a whole body system um yeah and as i said it's a self it's a, it's a self treatment developed by um sue hitzman in the us she is um a, a hands on practitioner and um she wanted to allow her clients to be able to take control and manage their own healing process. So as well as coming to her, once they weren't with her, she wanted something that they could actively participate in to help themselves. And that's when she developed MELT. Mm. Um, so what you do, you know, I teach people how to do MELT, but it's something that you do at home. So you become your own body worker, if you like. Oh, fantastic. Um, it doesn't replace anything and it's not a cure for anything. No. Um, but it does support your body's um, own ability to heal. Exactly. That's yeah. the important thing. Yeah, I, I think you've touched on two really important things there. Firstly, that the body has this innate system. It wants to self-heal given the right information and the right input. And I think obviously what you're doing is you're, I guess, changing the input by, by massaging and uh, stimulating this yeah. fascial web if you like and the other thing is that it's it's taking power back from uh experts yeah. 
saying what's best for you and what's best for your body. And I, I know that, you know, a lot of us have been through the mill with that kind of approach, you know, where we've been advised to do certain things like for you to have your hip replacement. Uh, uh, various things have been taught to me, you know, how I should be and how what I need. And it's usually drugs or surgery, isn't it? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> the two arms of modern medicine, which are brilliant in acute situations, acute medical emergencies like if yes. i you know have a burst appendix i want an operation to have that taken out you know yeah. uh, i've broken an arm i need somebody to mend that for me but what we're talking about much more these days are chronic long-term conditions that kind of creep up over the lifespan and gradually embed themselves in the body and to take yeah. back control uh, uh, and say no i can do this with a daily practice which is actually very simple you said it's gentle and it's quick um i think is is amazing and it's it's just kind of what attracted me to it really was it it didn't require vast amounts of information no. you just have to do certain very simple techniques don't you um yeah we, we say 10 minutes three times a week to keep wow. you, you know, to keep yourself and, fit and healthy and you know keep you keep your connective tissue three um, times rehydrated minutes. well who can't afford that in terms of time yeah, so there's exactly. no excuse is there really to yeah. say i no, can't it's, or i haven't the time yeah it is a i mean it's a unique approach that we've got here that we've, we've, we've yeah. developed or sue's developed in melt and i you know i hopefully teach yeah. pe other people to do no you um, do you do so yeah and it's just it, and it can be used by anybody that's the, that's the beauty yeah. it's you know i i've got you know it's the young the old yeah. the, as i say people that find mobility hard yes you know anybody can do the melt method it's not yeah. something that um is restrictive to fitness so it's not that something that only fit people can do yeah it, it's you know it's primarily helping people mm -hmm. um and it also helps you know those that um participate in sport yes. melt actually helps get people um getting more out of their sport yeah. so if you do a little bit of melt before you go out and i don't know play a game of tennis or a round of golf mm. you find that you actually get more mobility yeah um and you can actually get a stronger um, hit um and it just helps the whole body because it what it does it quiet quietens the stress reflex within the body um and it helps the fluid in the connective tissue move better yeah. so by doing that you're then going to move better of course um and i can i could attest to that because again i'm somebody i mean i now go back i still do my pilates i do lots of things i do a lot of walking um and whereas before i couldn't walk very far mm. you know now uh, I, I walked well, a couple of years ago um i managed to up in the lake district walk do a um a, i think it was a 17 mile walk wow. um three thousand meter ascent so and up and back down again it was it was just incredible it took me a long time but we got there yeah, but, <laughs> but it's, I, I took control back of what i wanted to do i was yeah. you know now I, i'm able to do the things i want to do yeah perfect which is you know no amount of money can ever give you that this, no. this is giving you your life back really from where you were yeah. which was very limited i guess uh, in it pain was and, yeah it was yeah. it was limited i felt i you know mm. i could do the things i wanted to do and mm. you know i when i go on holiday i like to paddleboard and i couldn't do that and it, yeah. it was it was very restrictive yeah yeah so so now you've transformed your experience into teaching others how to do this thing and and i know that you're very keen to kind of run classes and um you know one-to-ones yeah. and so on so definitely people can contact you if they are interested in exploring this method and i, I can certainly vouch for it i i, I know i'm not I, i'll be honest um i'm not doing my three times ten minutes but i i am doing <laughs> i am doing what i remember and um and it has actually really helped my foot uh, massively yeah. and because i'm Another thing you taught me was that the problem isn't always in the area that's causing the pain. And you, sh yes. you showed me that, that it was likely in the calf um, yeah. from the, for the plantar fasciitis. And that's what I've been working. And you work away from the site of the pain, don't you? We do. Yeah, we, we do an, in, an indirect before direct approach. So we will never get, you know, if somebody comes to me and they say, I've got hip pain. I won't work on the hips. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll work on the back of the thigh um, and um, yeah. before I go anywhere else. So we, we 
look at what what issues that people have and with something like plantar fasciitis you're right it's coming probably from the back of the calf it's coming from that area it could be coming from the pelvis so we'd work on the pelvis as well yeah yeah i mean we're taught that as massage therapists that the pain refers to different areas and you have to treat around the joint so it's the same idea it is the same idea so i i was aware of that but it it's sort of the way it works this this roller effect or or the ball seems to just provide um just the right amount of pressure to kind of bring in a fluid flow because yes you talked about the components of fascia and i know that it's a colloid that's what i learned so a colloid is a very interesting structure um it can be both a solid and a liquid which is fascinating so if you imagine um a surface that if you walked across it was a solid but if you puncture it you can actually Absolutely. make it move. I yeah. think um, there are there are various things that form colloids in nature, and, and it's interesting that the fascia is one of them. And so, um, stuck pressures, I imagine, really interrupt that flow, um, yes. where you've got I don't know knotted muscles or or just you're dehydrated, yeah. so things are not moving. I should imagine that's that's what's going yeah. on there, and yeah, um, and just instigating a nice smooth flow within that is going to start uh, opening up the channels and you know as supporting our bodies you talked about performance absolutely yes it does support the body yeah i mean it's interesting you just saying about that that solid and that liquid i've got a, something i do on my workshops um that i use it's basically corn flour so you mix corn flour with water yeah, that's right you can you, it. It, you just go out, if you go prod at it you won't get in if you literally yeah. go in and you sink in it will yeah. sink down through yeah. and it's something that people are always amazed to see it's like it is. Well, why does that work <laughs> And, and that's how it works. I mean, your, your, your connective tissue is like a sponge. I've got another couple of props here, Trisha. Mm. Um, and if you think of it as a sponge, um, when you're born, it's really nice and it's fluid and all your skin moves beautifully. Mm. But as you live, it yeah. becomes dehydrated. So you're born with something like this that's really nice and soft. Mm. And then you live and it becomes... <laughs> yeah, that's, that's more oh. like me and at the you, moment. If you pour water into this, it will soak straight in. Yeah. If you pour water into that, it will That's run it. straight off, which yeah. is why you have to manipulate. Uh, so, which is why I say drinking is not enough, drinking water is not enough, but if you drink, you do need to drink water. And if you drink water and then do a little bit of melt, which is actually getting that water into the connective tissue. In, inside, in yeah. Back. Got yeah. it, got it. No, that, that makes sense to me because of uh, knowing that some people can drink water but their cells are not absorbing it um i i imagine it's all to do with you know cellular function and you do hit a sort of wall where um, nothing is working properly and so how much water you drink doesn't really make a big difference no. um, and so you'll hear people saying you know you've got to drink six to eight glasses of water a day and, and you can do that but for some people it doesn't seem to actually get absorbed into their bodies and so it's just peed out basically exactly and exactly and that's yeah. what people say to me because i can't drink more yeah. water i just it's like well yeah. if you do the yeah look after your connected, you won't waste that water it will actually, it actually absorb it yeah, yeah yeah so that's something i when i've done classes with you i've noticed you get people to drink in between the various different exercises yes. you do so you, you are actually properly uh taking in more fluid and enabling things to work better yeah. um yeah. And you also, you check in, don't you, before and after. So you kind of get people's awareness of their yes. own body. Space. Yeah, that's, that's good. Well, yeah, rem- well remembered. Um, yeah. That's one of the most important things about Mel is um, we, we do check in with our bodies. So we call what we assess our bodies. So I will lead um, somebody through that process. So we check with our alignment so t- t- typically when we're using the roller we'll be lying on the floor so we lie flat on the floor and we we get people to to notice what they feel so we get them to notice whether parts of their body are particularly heavy on the floor or whether they're a little bit you know maybe one hips feels heavier than the other we get them to just think about that and try to remember how that feels mm. and once we've done some melt we go back and we reassess so I then go to people, remember what you felt. Yeah. Now what do you feel? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Almost everybody feels something within one yeah. session. Almost yeah. everybody. I think I have one person that hasn't. 
Um, not everybody's tuned in and it can take people a little while to get tuned into their bodies. Mm -hmm. um, but it is a really important process that you understand what's happening with your body. Well, um, I know because as we know the brain is a weird you know so it's a, well, a complicated <laughs> thing can be weird and you know it can tell you you've got pain when as we said before pain can become you know, it's from somewhere else so what it does it, it, it gives you this pain response to tell you there's something wrong mm. um oh, that's but yeah so we, we get people to try and mm. you know clue into their own feelings yeah I, I do the same obviously when I'm working I, pe I get people to rate their memory or their trauma or their feelings before we work and then after we've done the intervention and and for me what that does is help embed the new information yes in your brain because it's picking up the signals from your body and it's saying actually that feels better you know yeah. and yeah. that gives the the brain a, a rewiring so it's a neuroplastic thing it's actually rewiring your brain to say ah oh, i can feel like this instead of like this yeah. <laughs> um, which changes the pain signals and that i mean we're getting into a whole new ball game here we could do another <laughs> session are. on pain uh how pain is subjective it's not an objective there's no such thing as a pain receptor there are receptors that that interpret uh sensation as pain and they can get very confused and they can get very habituated as well and so you you end up feeling pain to the slightest touch or to things that aren't actually tissue damage so pain is a really really big area and anything i think that can help people with their pain situations as it has done with yours it's just such a phenomenal um understanding and it's really in depth and i know you're going to do more training you mentioned that yeah. so you're going to become an expert it sounds like in melt um by the time you get back you'll know far more than anybody else here so yeah um, <laughs> we're, we're looking forward to hearing the next phase i think and uh, if anybody wants to contact you uh how can they get hold of you well, I have a website. Um, my web, uh, my company is called Indolore, I N D O L O R E. Um, so indolore.co.uk, um, and all my contact details are on there. Oh, brilliant! Okay, well, thank you so much for spending time explaining Melt and having the little the little props as well. I love that <laughs> expandy thing. I'm yeah. thinking. If, any, if anybody wants to read more, sorry, there is a. This will come back to, back to front, but there is a Melt method book. Okay. which is available on amazon which yeah. explains more about connective tissue and melt yeah. um that that is available if anybody wants to read up more but there's lots on my website yeah. um there's also the meltmethod.com website okay. um yeah there's also a lot on there yeah there's a lot of information out there but there i think is. i think what we've talked about today is so important because as i've said it is about people taking control and looking after their bodies as a preventative as well as a getting out of the situation they're in you know so even if you aren't in pain um but you just fancy exploring it's for you too isn't it it's, it's a general oh, absolutely method. yeah yeah no i mean I, I get people coming along that just want to feel better because yeah. you know mm. you don't always recognize you're in pain one of the things mm. that i always say is that you know do you when you get out of bed in the morning do you feel stiff when you get up from a chair do you oh you know yeah. people don't yeah. recognize that as pain but that no. is connective tissue dehydration Absolutely. and the thing is is that if, if you do nothing about it it just mm. gets worse and worse yes so you know there i have got people that you know that come to me and they you know they, they might be in pain to start with but then they carry on doing it because they know mm. you know that shoulder injury that you've got or that neck pain that you have actually melt can help with that yeah. and you might not consider that a chronic pain but it's actually something that yeah you know you want to get you don't want that every day no indeed no well it's very empowering it's very simple and what i love about it is once you've got you know the instruction you can do it yourself and that's what i'm Absolutely. all about it is a self-treatment let me yeah. stress that i mean it's yeah. not a cure for anything but it is no. a you know it helps self healing um but it is a self-treatment it's something that we teach people to do themselves i mean yeah. yes you can come along to classes and that's how you'll learn to do it and then some people you know want to, that to be able to do that but it is a primarily a self-treatment yeah yeah which is what we're all about yeah uh, all yeah. of us who are yeah. in this mind body business so yes. anyway <laughs> great to talk with you and uh thanks very much for today and absolutely anybody interested in this can contact julie you can follow me on my youtube channel or find me on alchemytherapies.co.uk thanks for listening folks subscribe talk soon